Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the third in a series of market briefings we're running pre our hybrid ATE in June this year uh, to update you all on the various market situations around the world and, of course, any relevant information uh, around ATE that's coming up. Uh, my name's Lee Sorensen from the industry team at Tourism Australia. Really pleased today to be able to bring you our Greater China briefing. I'll be getting us started here this morning and then facilitating some question and answers at the end, uh, time permitting. Before we begin, though, in the spirit of reconciliation, Tourism Australia acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. First up today, you're going to hear from our Executive General Manager for Eastern Markets and Aviation, based up in Shanghai, although today he's in Beijing with the team, Andrew Holt, who will give us a greater uh, China overview. Then you'll hear from our Regional Business Development Manager for China, Benjamin Chen, and our Regional Marketing Director for China, Fred Luan. And we'll finish with our Manager for Hong Kong, and a true legend, I might add, of Tourism Australia, Carmen Tam, followed by some uh, Q&A. Uh, so some housekeeping around all this before I hand to Andrew. Uh, the session will be recorded and available at a later date on the registration site. A link will be sent to everyone when it's been made available and you'll also get a copy of uh, via PDF of the presentation that's, um, that we'll go through today. Um, at the bottom of your screen, you'll see some uh, question and answer options or an, an option, I should say. Uh, through the course of the briefing, if you can and do have any questions, please type them in. Uh, better that than blast them all through at the end. So as we're going through, if you've got questions, uh, please send them through so we've got time to have a look at them and then we'll respond if we've got time at the end of the briefing. We'll also send you a survey at the conclusion of all this. It only takes about a minute to fill out, but it really gives us valuable feedback on how we can run these and make them a bit more informative for you. So please do complete that uh, when you can. On that note though, I'm now gonna hand over to uh, Andrew. You there, Hoggy? G'day, Lee. How are you going? Just a few technical difficulties. I'll just uh, sort that out. There you go. Thanks very much. And uh, sorry about that. Um, as I said, we're just, uh, uh, Fred, Benjamin and I are in Beijing at the moment, um, seeing a number of our industry partners and um, ensuring that um, you know, Tourism Australia still connects, which is still very important with our key distribution partners, not only in Northern China, um, but right across China as well, as, as they also go through very difficult times and um, being very focused on their outbound. Um, and very much like Australia too, having to focus on what their uh, domestic market looks like and, and how they respond to that as well. Just today, I wanted to um, uh, go through some of the uh, opportunities that we've been working through um, over the last uh, over the course of the year, um, but also introduce uh, Fred Luan, uh, who looks after all of our marketing, communications, PR, and social, and of course Benjamin, which many people know, uh, Benjamin Chen, who looks after uh, and continues to do a great job in looking after our trade and our trade development, including our uh, Aussie specialist as well. So first up, you know, the year we've had um, to win in a number of different areas. Um, we've had to look at the obviously now consumers, our industry and our distribution and aviation partnerships. And obviously with the consumer side, needing to keep and build on the consumer demand, ensuring that, our, that the, you know, the work that many in the industry have done over many years um, doesn't get diverted uh, in that, uh, to our competitors. So really working on the consumer side to make sure that we engage the consumer um, about that dreaming, about planning and about what their future looks like. And Fred will talk about some of the campaign activity that we've done over the last 12 months about sharing their Australian memories, about planning and what they want to do when borders reopen, but also in engaging uh, content from our 8D content to make sure that the consumer sees new and exciting things that they haven't seen in Australia before. And that's about some, a lot of the time is those that have been to Australia re-engaging with them and saying, hey, you know, there's great things that you can do when borders open and when it's safe to do so. Our industry in, in China has been very supportive of Australia for, for many, many years. Um, and we need, you know, obviously, the operators to survive during the crisis, ensuring that Australia has a product to sell. And, you know, at the other end, further growing our appeal to consumers. So we've been talking to the, uh, through Aussie specialists, we've trained, I think, nearly uh, 15,000 
uh, Aussie specialists over the last 12 months. The last six months has been even busier with both online and offline training. And ASP is going to be and will remain a very key focus of what we do to keep those agents in uh, all over China and, uh, and Hong Kong to ensure that those agents um, still have the great um, knowledge of Australia, but also that they're being kept up to date with new product and new developments as well. Some of the areas that we've been working through on our distribution stay very focused on our distribution. Our agents have said last night, uh, we had our uh, key distribution partner meeting in uh, Beijing with our Northern agents. They're very, very focused on what it would look like from a recovery. Very keen to get going. Um, although with borders closed, it's difficult to be able to make some of those decisions. However, they are very much focused on you know, what that would look like for a return, what the consumer will look like. And of course, you know, Tourism Australia continuing to support uh, their endeavours to keep the consumer uh, dreaming as well. Um, you know, we continue to engage also with our aviation partners in, in Greater China. And that is about ensuring that when borders do open, that they have the ability to be able to bring that capacity back on. Just on the China travel sentiment as well, and, and this is an important one that we're uh, constantly looking at. And you know, we want to make sure that the consumer confidence uh, and we're tracking in the right direction, but the China travel sentiment, you can see the consumer confidence has been rising since the pandemic started. And you're seeing, we're seeing um, great consumer engagement with our content, which shows that people are and want to have um, that content uh, available to them about all the great things that Australia has to offer. We look at travel intention for the first, you know, three to six in the next three to six months within Australia. That's obviously difficult because you can't travel and borders aren't open, so the consumer views that very differently. But you can see that that has continued to rise in, in the long run average over the course of that time. Booking intention uh, for next month within Australia obviously is still very subdued because of border closures. And I feel it is safe to travel within Australia. We're seeing a, a rise again in that sentiment as well, following you know lockdowns in Australia or, mm. or outbreaks in news in Australia, but also reflects some of the consumer sentiment. You know, in, in northern China, uh, prior in, in earlier this year and prior to Chinese New Year, there were a number of lockdowns in a lot of provinces in northern China where there had been some COVID outbreaks, and then consumer confidence starts to rise post that once things start to get um, start to improve on a local basis as well. Uh, looking at the top line for Hong Kong as well, um, and Hong Kong is uh, and has and will remain a very important um, uh, feeder for Australia. And we know that Hong Kong citizens love to come to Australia, love to eat, shop, and enjoy all the great sites that Australia has. But also, you know, working uh, in that market, and Carmen will uh, talk about this too. Hong Kong people are looking at what are the next phases and what they do. Is it about more open spaces? About uh, enjoying many of the great things that. Uh, that Australia has to offer from walking to uh, uh, you know, getting out to, the, to nature and outback as well. And you can see that there's been some certain uh, upswing in consumer confidence, the intention, booking intention, and about safety as well for Australia as Australia continues to do well uh, with its COVID numbers too. So you can see those numbers will start to rise as that, as that moves forward. I'll hand over to uh, Benjamin Chen, but we've got some questions coming in. We'll get through those as we move towards the, uh, get to the end. So Benjamin will be up next talking about uh, our trade and uh, Aussie specialist program and about how and what Tourism Australia is doing to ensure that those important relationships between the industry in Australia and the trade in Greater China have been developed and continuing to develop as well. Uh, so I'll hand over to Benjamin and then we'll hand over to uh, to Fred Luan to talk about the marketing. So uh, look forward to catching up with everyone at the uh, Q&A at the end. Uh, Benjamin. Thanks, Andrew. Good morning, all. Um, let me first echo um, Andrew's remarks about a, um, ASPs. Um, they have done a great job. Um, what is, what is, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I think uh, since the uh, yes, putting yes, when the uh, the pandemic hit China in early uh, last uh, last year, the entire ASP team moved all activities um, um, from offline to online. So not only move to online, but increase our regular webinar sessions. The regular means one hour uh, long uh, webinar sessions from monthly to weekly. So give you a day, uh, a stat uh, showing that the, from 11 March, 2020 to 31st March this year, 
we have delivered 41 webinar sessions, which is a lot. And then upon, on top of uh, um, the regular version of webinars, uh, from September last year, we uh, the AS, China ASB team has been promoting a short version live streaming program by the name of from from Aussie Sing. So we just aim to to assist Australian products um, with showcasing their on-site scene from Australia uh, to China travel trade as well. So starting from September to 31st of March, we delivered 13 sessions. And in summary, um, 14, uh, 41 plus 13, we, we made a total webinar session 51 over the last past 12 months. Uh, that 41 session has generated 34, over 34,000 uh, total views. Uh, one of the top view session generate 1,272 views. And also we got a, a similar interaction. Interaction means comments and the question uh, over 29,000. Uh, one of the top interaction uh, session we receive we received 5579 uh, uh, sort of question and comments and all that 54 session and interaction top views generate new ASP registra registration over 4000 uh, amount of 4, 4, 54 uh, webinar session uh, will also include signature experience of Australian part so in particular, we delivered a great golf course session uh, uh, once and then lecture laws once uh, and ultimate wandering two times and wildflower journeys one times. And that 54 session, we engaged 34 regional Aus Aus Australian products and five national products. And of course, covered all eight states and territory. And of course, our friends, uh, eight STOs. Um, just show uh, share you a, a, a campaign we did uh, for the Chinese New Year uh, to the Ch Chinese AS ASPs. So we call it ASP H5 campaigns. Actually, this is the online carnival um, to celebrate Chinese New Year and sending out good messages to them and in the purpose of attracting those new followers and ASP trainees and convert to, to uh, new ASPs. It's, it's, it's very engaging sort of a gaming, uh, H5 gaming uh, uh, program. So uh, we just first ran it uh, in the market and received, uh, well received in the market during the Chinese New Year period. And starting from February this year, we restarted our offline training sessions. Uh, the two pictures showing that one training session held in Chengdu during Chinese New Year period. The other is held in, uh, was held in Beijing uh, online training sessions. And then we also covered Guangzhou as well and Qingdao, a beautiful city um, in North China. Um, um, yeah, as well in, in the, for Northern, the Northern part of China. What we are working or working with our Chinese airlines, um, as Andrew said, is so we continue engaging with our uh, key partner, Chinese carrier, China Southern, China Eastern, Air China, and because they are the key pillar of our entire tourism industry, uh, we have uh, actually um, Andrew led us to meet, ha have a highlight meeting with China Southern and China Eastern. And for the first time, we invite China Southern, China Eastern, Air China to join our TA. Uh, we got online webinar uh, during the Australian Marketplace online period. This is the first time we get the three airline came on board at the same time. So coming up next, we'll meet with Air China and Citroen Airlines um, later this month. Um, yeah, engaging through high level meeting, but also uh, through working with uh, those Chinese airline on specific uh, programs. Just give you an example of how we work with China, China Eastern, uh, China Southern uh, delivered Australian themed offline session that was uh, that were held in, uh, in in Guangzhou and Shenzhen respectively. Uh, we engaged China uh, China Southern Scope Frequent Farm members, uh, just just keeping them dreaming and make Australia as the 
as the next holiday destination as the purpose. And don't forget our trade partners, um, our travel agency. Uh, this four picture shows how we worked with the premium uh, travel agency and its premium travel club uh, running uh, a few uh, sharing sessions in Shanghai and in Chengdu. Uh, by this time, we engaged their travel clubs uh, because we got an existing member, engage them, uh, talking to them, uh, spread a good mouth through that, through them, spread a good mouth uh, and deliver a good message to the consumers, uh, still keeping them dreaming and make Australia as the next holiday destination. ATE, so AT21 and AT21 Lux, um, this will be a um, hybrid event in China. So this is quite unique. Um, I think um, this AT hybrid event in China will be the, will be the biggest one for an ATO in, in, uh, NTO in China. So how big it is? Well, we, have, we will have over 200 uh, plus uh, buyers and STOs and the VIPs and media in one meeting venues. We provide the facilities. And then for the buyer and seller, just meet each other virtually through TA online platform. Key dates. Um, the buyer arrival on the 9th of June, and it will join a Pullman on following day, 10th, and it finished by 11 June. So actually finished at 3 p.m. on 11 June. China buyers. Um, this time we recruit 120 China general buyers to join AT21. And we also invite 70 uh, China premium buyers to join. This is a good number. Because I recall the last time we did an Australian marketplace in Chengdu, um, we only recruit 35. This time we double the number. So the buyers from the AT General and AT Lux are very less overlapped. Uh, the general buyers are from the traditional urban travel agencies, while the premium buyers from premier and tailor-made and premium department of those traditional urban agencies. How uh, our China buyer looks like? 50, uh, 50 of them are from uh, East China, 58 from North China, and from South, uh, South China will have 59 and West China will have 23. What are the China, China buyers looking for based on the feedback from Australian Marketplace Online last December? Uh, following three uh, uh, focus on the area, we might, we might you to look into it. Uh, firstly, uh, please tell what is what is the company, your company current status, and do you have any any product, new product coming up, any product updates for them? Um, so give them updates on your product will be important. And if you have a WeChat account, do show your QR code, WeChat QR code, connect with them, then you can follow up offline. And because appointment time are always limited, times are always limited. So please talk more on the tourism and business. And media program, let me hand over to Fred. He will uh, take through some media programs. Thanks, Benjamin. Um, um, and ATE is the major tourism event. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, you know, we see ATE as the major tourism event for Australia, but also it is a very good opportunity for us to leverage to create the Australian story. Although the ATE, the media from China cannot be physically present in Australia this year, but we continue to invite about 10 to 15 media from China to come to the meeting event uh, venue uh, to meet with all the buyers um, and STO partners. Um, and, and please note, these media partners, uh, these media journalists are not only from trade media. Uh, from a couple of years ago, we have already started the shift uh, from trade media to uh, lifestyle and travel media, because we 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 believe it is um, very important for us to dig down deep um, from you guys, from the buyers, and also from the STO partners about the great Australian story uh, that we have to offer um, to the Chinese consumer. And so here are the, some major components of the media program that we are currently creating uh, for ATE this year. Um, so the media will be invited to a um, TA media briefing. At that briefing, uh, we will be introducing the market effort that we have been doing from Tourism Australia. And then also, of course, the uh, market, market conditions. 
Um, and uh, we will um, be given the opportunity to media um, to have a few operators interview. Um, of course, it's going to be a virtual online interview. Uh, therefore, for this component, uh, I would like to take some volunteers from you guys. Please contact us um, after this um, call if you're interested to, to tell your story to the Chinese media friends. And we will also set up the opportunity for media to talk to um, our STO partners. It's like the uh, business appointment sessions. So each of them will have 15 minutes to spend with each of the STOs um, to learn about what the state has to offer, how the state is recovering from um, COVID and from, uh, from bushfire. Uh, what are the great stories that we can generate uh, from all these states? Um, of course, we will have executive, uh, exclusive executive interviews um, for um, uh, for the TA members and also for the um, S, um, um, uh, the operate. Uh, sorry, the uh, buyers um, interviews uh, during the event. And also, we have invited C Trip um, to share some travel trend. Um, C Trip being the biggest OTA uh, platform in China, uh, they have a, a enormous amount of data. Um, to share with our media friends. So this is the top line view of uh, what the media program is going to look like. And we are currently working through this process. I uh, will advise um, in details later on. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Um, I have two more slides to show. Just um, uh, give the highlights of uh, our team, our distributed team, um, next year's focus um, for business development. Um, since the market situation has changed. So uh, we need to review and renew our core agreement with Chinese, Chinese airlines. And then um, talking about the airlines, uh, we want to leverage airlines resources, in particular, the frequent fire um, data and their members and run some activities and keep, uh, keep them, um, the, the consumers, the frequent flyer members dreaming for their Australian holidays. And we will also work with um, dedicated airlines and partners to drive and generate leads to future, future trouble. Um, here I put it AT2022. We hope there will be a physical event, but as a backup, we might have a um, hybrid event again in China. And then KDP program. So we launched a KDP program. We have a, a different version. The last version was 3.0. So uh, in, in, in next, uh, financial, we might review and uh, sort of renew our China KDP program, adding more um, uh, sort of uh, KPIs and uh, evaluation into it. And also we'll work with the dedicated travel partners to drive and uh, generate leads uh, for future travel. As Fred had just mentioned about a C trip, uh, we might work with C trip um, to run sort of a sort of a, a mini campaign or content campaign uh, to drive some leads for future travels. And again, um, we, uh, we might join, uh, sponsor uh, sort of a local China um, sort of general and a premium travel trade to engage travel trade and keep Australia uh, on top of their mind. ASPs, um, I think uh, the ASP will continue their good work. Uh, they, will, they will facilitate offline general training sessions in key cities and continue their webinars while it's uh, a short version or long version, uh, working together with our STO and our Australian products. And don't forget that we have a signature Experience of Australia part. We're <coughs> running a dedicated uh, sort of tra training session to the premium agencies. And since we have a good coverage uh, penetration in a B2B social media, um, we would enhance our presence uh, in our B2B social media through uh, our ASP uh, WeChat account and online acti activities. And ASP 2.0 um, is, um, is a big event, a big, uh, they gotta be happening uh, in, uh, quite, quite soon. So we wanna, wanna ASP 2.1 to be localized to fit into China market situation. And technically wanna also wanna upgrade our ASP WeChat mini programs. So whatever we do, um, offline training, uh, online training, webinars, and upgrade systems want to recruit new OC specialists uh, in the coming new year. Um, that's pretty much of my presentation. I hand over again to Fred. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, as Benjamin mentioned, the effort from the AS ASP team during the last 12 months was phenomenal. And at TA, we're, um, we are a big 
one united family but also we are being very competitive um so i asked my marketing team to work very hard to provide artillery support to the asp team because it's not a one-man fight so we are all in it together uh, before i showed you um some um, activities marketing activities we have conducted in the china market i would like to show you some numbers so here are the recap of um, the CDP report that TA has been doing um, in quite a few years. Um, so from 2016 all the way to 2021, um, as you can see, both intention and the consideration Australia is right up there. Um, only in 2018, Australia dropped a little bit and fall behind France. And I think that's the time we launched a China campaign called Two Australian for Wars to, to address the specific issue that we saw in the research, which is fashionability. So that campaign actually helped Australia branding um, to come back up and then overtake France. And as you can see, starting from 2020 uh, in July, uh, Australia is leading the charge and leaving everybody behind by far. And then come back to February 2021, this is when China is, is fully back online um, and made a full recovery um, from COVID. And then Australia is still remaining very strong in that position. Therefore, we think uh, when the border opens, um, China consumer will return um, to Australia because this is the destination that have been they have been dreaming for so long, and they have a, such a strong intention uh, to come back to Australia um, and ex experience what we have to offer. And during the conversation Andrew and I had with the Chinese media yesterday, um, you know, uh, one thing in common is that we all believe after COVID, um, one of the most in important consideration for people to pick a destination is safety. Um, Australia has that to offer and we manage COVID so well and we are a very big country with a, a, a little population. Uh, so therefore, when tourists, and, uh, tourists come to Australia, they have uh, a much bigger space uh, to enjoy uh, per capita uh, than if they would go to other countries. So therefore, safety um, um, is right up there uh, for Australia and then it is uh, something that the Chinese uh, tourists uh, will be looking for and we are in a much better position uh, when the border opens. Um, just some numbers to show you how quickly China um, recovered domestically. Um, I think China um, lifted its travel restriction, the, the domestic travel restriction in April, 2020. And then after that, there has been a few long, long weekends and, and national holidays. And overall, we have seen an 84% domestic recovery, a flight um, recovery compared to July uh, 20, 2019. So we are almost back online at full capacity uh, domestically for airlines to, uh, to operate in this market. However, with the border closure, um, we are only about uh, less than 10% of international um, international um, uh, flight capacity. Um, I know there are different reports out there to show you um, the numbers, um, um, how Chinese tourists enjoy the domestic traveling during the, um, um, the different um, uh, window of uh, public holidays. Uh, we are actually looking at about 90 to 95% recovery um, to a normal year. So uh, this shows you how much, uh, how much they miss traveling. Um, and um, and it won't be surprised when the border opens, uh, we will see a big um, rush for people for people to travel internationally. Um, so about marketing strategy, um, you know we are we are facing a very difficult time, and nobody had prepared for this five years ago. Um, so TA improvised, and we actually have set up a phased approach. We are currently at the moment of pre-border opening. Therefore, we're using a lot of channels, especially social channels, um, earned and owned and paid channels to funnel through the content that will keep our consumer dreaming, keep inspired by Australia. So one of the examples that we have done was AD campaign that you, um, many of you have seen. Uh, it was a great success uh, in the China market. And if we do get to know when the border gets to open, the six months prior to that, we will be um, um, a market um, stronger um, information and stronger content that will drive people uh, to conversion. And we'll work harder with our conversion uh, partners, uh, like our KDPs and like our um, online travel partners, and also like our um, airlines to drive that pre-booking conversions. 
And when the border opens, of course, um, globally, TA is working on a brand 3.0 project um, to uh, to be ready for the uh, to to be ready for the grand reopening. Uh, and during our internal discussion, we had to make sure um, that the global approach will have a local nuanced. Um, uh, uh, um, approach the local market because we know every market is unique every market is looking for something rather different to um, other markets so we make sure that the global campaign when it lands in china it will resonate oil with our chinese traveler oops here we go okay and um, so at the moment we are we are sitting at the the period that we don't know when the border is going to open. Um, so we call this defend um, uh, period. So the defend content that we have developed is the new content asset formats for our social and native video. Um, AD was the example, and I'm going to show you more um, later on. And also we have uh, developed a range of different uh, standard digital assets to go across our different paid uh, platforms. Uh, some of the platforms are very unique to China that you will see later. Um, and some platforms are quite universal. And in terms of the content theme, we try our best to cover all the areas or pillars that Australia has to offer in order to support, uh, in, in order to, um, uh, to bring the different content from different aspects um, uh, to the Chinese consumer. So the main pillar will be the four main pillars on the screen, nature and wildlife, arts and culture, food and drink, and beach and, um, and, and islands. Um, and also the um, the themes that we we are covering are to support the locals to show Australia how Australia recovered uh, from the bushfire the year before and how Australian industry thrived uh, during this very difficult time uh, the romance the travel goals family and friends uh, family friendly destination road trips who uh, which are the two very uh, popular travel themes uh, for for this market Conscious travel, um, which which talks about sustainability, um, luxury travel, Aboriginal culture, uh, insider guides, which is a popular section on our um, Austocian uh, websites. People come for traveling tips um, and first timers. Um, so if you uh, travel to Australia for the first time, what are the must do things that you need to experience in Australia? So these are the contents that we have developed and that we are constantly seeking for the right channel uh, to funnel through this content to the right audience. Because yes, we're talking to HVT, but different HVTs at a different travel mindset and, uh, and the stage using the big data, using the partnership that we have established with the partners in market, we shall be able to identify who are looking for road trips tips. So we're feeding that content to this person. So who are looking for romance island, des um, island holiday experiences so we will be using that particular channel um, to funnel through the content. Um, some of the content example, um, I'm just using AD as an example. So I mentioned the word native. So native will be um, the content that we feature on our uh, owned um, platforms. For example, our OS.CN landing page, um, uh, you know, our PR channels and the video channels. And we, uh, for AD, we have developed six different um, videos that are very immersive. Uh, actually, that was very impressive. So we heard feedbacks from media yesterday. They loved the video. They were asking if Tourism Australia is going to produce more um, uh, video experiences like that. And social media, of course, um, it, it is a big thing um, in China. I mean, lots of Asian markets, uh, most of people's life lives on social media and it is the platform that we cannot miss. Uh, um, uh, it, it's the platform that we, can, we can't miss. PR, we have continuous offer um, in market to speak to our PR, uh, media partners through our PR channels. And we do weekly email blast. Um, we have a regular media pitches with the media just to make sure that our Australian story will be featured um, in, the, um, in the Chinese media. Um, in the last 12 months, we have conducted uh, many different marketing activities. Some of the highlights, uh, for example, the content application, so AD was one of them. Uh, and then after AD, we have launched the, um, the wildlife, nature, and conscious travel content, um, you know, just to give Chinese consumers something they love. And we know that whenever we feature wildlife content, people just love it. And from May 2020, Tourism Australia globally has launched this campaign called With Love From Us. 
and we have adapted in China uh, very well and launched it on social media, uh, which is a, a UGC campaign. I'm going to show you some results later on. Um, that was very well received, and, and it was actually to our surprises how many consumers interact uh, with that campaign that we put out there. Um, of course, PR and media releases, KOL engagement was an uh, always on um, effort that we have at the marketing team here. Um, and also uh, our search um, and social uh, effort never stopped. Search is an always on thing. It's very different to uh, what you have in Australia, like Google. Uh, we have um, a major partner here in China called Baidu, um, is major, our main search um, uh, engine partner. But also we are exploring the um, opportunity to work with other social platform who are big in search right now. Um, and we know consumer, rather than going to Baidu, typing your key questions, um, they just go to your, uh, they just go to their WeChat page and the search for answers that they're looking for. So these are the some new platforms and op opportunities we are trying to understand more and then trying to leverage at the first time uh, at the first minute. Um, so AD campaign was a great success um, in China. Firstly, we launched the AD campaign on the social media, and then I have to mention this. Um, this was the first time that we have ever leveraged the social platform called Douyin, which um, you might know, uh, it is the Chinese version of TikTok. Um, and it was so well received on, on the platform and on average, every video um, got about a few, few million views and our Douyin account follower um, grew exponentially uh, from a 600 followers account uh, because when we opened the account, we didn't we we didn't uh, put too much paid resources behind it, and after the um, campaign, we have now got uh, we have now got about close to forty thousand followers, and it's still growing. Um, and also, also on our Weibo, the video was very well loved, um, and we have featured the video on our major OTA platforms, including C Trip and Mafeng Wo. Mafeng Wo is the China version of um, TripAdvisor. Um, which has been a long-term partner to Tourism Australia. And there is another uh, new platform that we have trialed for AD is called the Little Red Book or Red. Um, it's, it's about you know, recommendations from KOLs, recommendations from, from other people. So we have featured our AD videos on it um, as well. The media performance was um, actually really, really surprisingly good. Um, so after the first batch of launch AD into social media, we thought you know, the content was so great we want to extend the coverage of such video. Therefore, we bought paid advertising, we bought out-of-home advertising, we bought smart TV advertising to feature um, AD videos. And then it got talked about in market um, by a lot of people that we can hear market buzz about, about AD video. Um, and there are some other efforts that we have done for the push or for the launch of AD video. Um, so we have invited KOLs and media um, to a very intimate uh, media um, conference. So we set up a um, viewing um, opportunity for media and KOLs to, um, to listen and to watch the AD video firsthand at a venue that's uh, been managed by uh, our very dear friend of Australia, Craig Willis. Um, in Shanghai. Um, and right after the event, we can see the KOLs, the media are sending out their version of the video and their version of that day's experiences on social media, uh, which got um, um, spread very, very quickly. So that was a, a good testimony um, of why, of how AD video is loved um, by the Chinese consumer, because it is different, it is very new, it is very experiential, and it is very immersive. This is what we need when we market Australia to, um, to the China market. And after the AD video, as I mentioned earlier, we have featured the video content for wildlife na and nature, and as well as conscious travel. Of course, uh, after the first wing of Douyin, we continue, uh, we continue to push such content um, on Douyin platform, which has got a lot of viewerships, a lot of uh, likes uh, on it. And Weibo and WeChat being our major social, uh, always on social platforms, um, uh, played a very important role um, um, for, for, for this video. <clears throat> As I mentioned um, earlier that we launched the With Love From Loss campaign last year. And then these are the photos that we have collected 
uh, from a consumer. So we ask the consumer to submit their memories, their stories, their pictures um, when they travel to Australia. And these are just a friction of the uh, of the stories and, and uh, photos that we have collected from our consumer. And we will continue to run this campaign as an always on consumer engagement campaign to drive more great stories out of our consumer. And then this is a first person um, testimonial from the people who's been to Australia. And PR efforts, you know, we continue to work with travel, luxury and lifestyle uh, um, uh, press or magazines in market to feature Australian stories and then we will continue to do so and then we will actually extend that coverage onto more digital focus and social focused media um, to tell the story. And all, the last slide is on social media, just some numbers to show, um, you know, how engaging that our platforms are for the Chinese consumer. On, we, Weibo, we have about 1.4 million uh, followers. I, I believe we are the largest um, NTO account um, on Weibo in China. And we post about five to seven posts a day, a week, sorry. Um, and on WeChat, we have about 416,000 um, followers on, on, on this platform. And we also open our WeChat video account to complement uh, our WeChat official account. So we put two long posts a week and one short videos a week. The recent um, popular video was the kangaroo scratching its belly. Um, it was so loved by our consumer on social media. Um, Red or Xiao Hongshu or Little Red Book, we have about uh, 17,000 followers and we are not putting too much of paid effort uh, behind it. We just wanna let it grow organically, see how people engage with our content. And on Douyin, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, almost about um, 40,000 uh, followers on Douyin and we have about one to three posts uh, on a weekly basis. And that sums it up, some of the marketing effort that we have done um, in China in the last 12 months. And I hope you like it. And the next up, I'll pass it down to um, Carmen Tan, the living legend, uh, our manager of Hong Kong to talk, uh, talk to you about our effort in the Hong Kong market. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. And Joseph, uh, welcome to Hong Kong story. So I have to start off with a very good, uh, very fit slide as uh, uh, the consumer demand project shows us the latest result. For the green dot where Australia's position over these years, you can see that we actually rank up high. And even in February, we almost uh, uh, at the same level as Thailand ever first, because Thailand is such a short haul destination out of Hong Kong. And whereas Australia is in our mid haul destination, we already is side by side by them. So we actually were gaining our positioning, not just in consideration, in experience and in intention. And also our nature and wildlife safety, quality and coastal, and even the latest results that our good food and wine actually bypass France and we all gain number one position. So we are ready, uh, our consumer are ready uh, once the border open that we are going to have a go. So let me now share with you our market uh, performance over the past uh, year. No doubt, Hong Kong is a very challenging year um, over 2020 with all the border closed. Uh, unlike China, they can still do some domestic. Hong Kong is just a very small island. We can only go from Hong Kong to maybe Kowloon or Jim Sache or now our outlying islands. So I'm going to use four slides to show you every quarter of what's happening and our Hong Kong stories. Hang on there. So in this first quarter, uh, all the red um, kind of icons shows you what's happening in Hong Kong. And the blue and the orange icon shows you all the uh, trade and consumer activities. So start on the first quarter in 2020, we actually have our fourth way heated heart in Hong Kong. High numbers, uh, strict quarantines, we can't do much uh, uh, in July and August because most of the time we have to work out from home. But um, during the 2020 this year, we're trying to make a full use of whatever we could to make Australia awareness up high. So from July, you can see that our Hong Kong uh, International Airport actually saw a decrease of 81% uh, percent, uh, uh, a decrease in capacities and, and, and loading and flight. And also this cor uh, correspondence with our ABS figures as of December. Still in December 2019, we still have our 300,000 level, 
But now on December 2020, we actually also fall down because of the border closure, very much in line with the Hong Kong Airport Authority uh, figures that we are down by 80%. So our start off, uh, once the situation becomes better, we then start off our webinar uh, training. And actually we would like to share some of our experiences of uh, a coffee break time. So every time when we do webinar, we try to make it a theme and then uh, to make uh, all the uh, uh, agents engaging because they're also having a tough time. They might be having no pay or uh, learning at their own expense. So uh, I think their time is very valuable and we have to make that time worthwhile. So, uh, and then we, uh, I think just now Fred also shared some of our global uh, content, which Hong Kong market also do the same. But apart from the global content, we also have some local uh, content to activate in the market. Uh, same like the Travel Suit campaign that we actually reuse some of our KOL campaign and recall the good memories they have and keep the dreaming face alive. So on Q2, there's more activities uh, because the situation seems to coming back a little bit better. Uh, as you can see, uh, start off in October, we have our uh, partnership with Austrade because food uh, is one very uh, important uh, factors in Hong Kong. We also travel by our taste buds. So uh, Austrade actually do a Festival Australia campaign and uh, Tourism Australia ride on them. And actually they use With Love from Oz video as their teaser to start off the campaign. Uh, and then uh, from, from, from Festival Australia, uh, then we actually launched our first 8D uh, campaign content in Hong Kong. And it reached the four videos, uh, totally it reached 1.4 million true viewers. Uh, because sound is very important, so we have picked YouTube and Smart TV as the main channel to actually uh, pro um, uh, promote these videos. And at the same time, uh, you can see that in uh, October, November, we have some good sign because the Singapore, Hong Kong travel bubbles seems to be in a positive way. Everybody was so excited, uh, uh, looking forward for the bubble and looking for, forward for some, some form of travel available. And then the search was up 400% when the news was announced. So even within the uh, industry where you cannot fly anywhere or even go to Shenzhen border or Macau border, uh, so some of the fly nowhere packages like Hong Kong Airlines vacation start out, staycation was real hot in Hong Kong. But then uh, as of in November, some bad news already coming up because the government subsidies for the travel industries actually ends in October. So there's a lot of, um, uh, I mean, over the whole year, the travel agents already shut their doors. So financially, they are quite in the burden. Uh, so, and even in Cafe Dragon, they already start to stop flying and Cafe actually started to uh, minimize or trim down their staff, uh, cutting 8,500 uh, globally jobs. So this becomes one of the kind of downturns. But anyway, uh, in anyhow, our ASP uh, training still going on because we, we, we believe that once the border open, travel by themselves or travel in a really minimized smaller group size will be the trend. So we are preparing ourselves for this new trends to come up. So uh, the uh, like we have partnered with Singapore, Malaysia, Guangzhou to actually conduct a Cantonese ASP training self-drive module along uh, with the team. So you can see all the blue uh, 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 activities are gone in. And even in the toughest time in December in the AMC of Australian marketplace, we still have 20 Hong Kong buyers attended. In Q3, uh, gradually, after the full years of quite depressing news, uh, we can see some kind of good uh, turnaround. First of all, uh, the Hong Kong ad spend report uh, in January uh, to February, we can see some significant upward trend. Uh, TV actually recorded a 50% year on year increase, and that is mainly from the food and toiletries household items. Mobile actually, old mobile ad spend up 43% year on year, and that is mainly driven by banking and investment services. 
Social media also reported a 62% year on year, and that is mainly through cosmetic and skincare category. Last but not least, you can already start to see some of the outdoor app comes back. That's about 17%. That's from the banking and investment services. And uh, this is some of the good news on the ad spending, but on the on the trade side, because uh, the border really still closed for almost a year and there's no sign of reopening in any uh, short time. So EGL actually started to cut up, cut back to their tour guide uh, uh, staffing. 120 guys need, need to uh, actually be released at, in January, but they have been promised back to the, the, the staff that once for the reopen, they will be first to be employed because they will have a job to do. So uh, that's one bad news from uh, EGL. But on the trade side, you can see that there's a lot of uh, uh, blue activity still going on. And uh, we also signed up with uh, Destination New South Wales to do one of uh, and KK Day because we believe uh, self drive will be a, a new trend in the future. And meanwhile, we can do some content development first. So we have been doing that one and I will show you some more details later on in my slides. So continue to do well wildlife and nature content. And then uh, in February, after our Chinese New Year, uh, good news coming out because uh, uh, the vaccine plan in Hong Kong started. But at the same time, because we learned from our lessons that we have been very good control of our COVID situation in Hong Kong, our borders have to be very much secured. So that's why even uh, the, our pilots and the crew, cabin crews have to go through strict, uh, strict quarantine for 14 days. So you can see that from uh, Feb to March, a lot of our capacities have to cut back because of this uh, quarantine measures is in place. So uh, in, on the uh, consumer side, our second phrase 8D uh, uh, campaign is still rolled out. And also uh, our Sony uh, partner also give us a new video with singer Jason uh, to be uh, 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 showcasing Australia. So we have more new content on the way. And then uh, and, and also even though the borders is open, we have one media actually now based in South Australia. He is able to uh, help us to, to do some fresh uh, media content. So on Q4, so uh, still much more promising because you can see that in the market uh, up till April, after about uh, uh, one and a half months, uh, six weeks uh, uh, vaccine plan, we have already about 7% uh, population vaccinated. And during the five days long Easter holiday, which I think this is the first year ever that all Hong Kong population is stay back in Hong Kong, uh, our hotel occupancy actually stood up at 90%. So this is quite a sign for recovery because we really need to start, go somewhere. And then, uh, uh, and then you can see that over the last quarter, a lot of our content and uh, trade uh, is activities is uh, are planning up. And uh, even Hong Kong Tourism Board is having their recovery plan. So. I think we have been asking what is our target and what will be our future uh, in Hong Kong. Um, basically, from what your consumer demand project, you can already see that everybody uh, raised Australia high up. And who will be our con uh, target? I think it will be double income, no kids uh, segment, because this group, if they are still much much employed, uh, they have been stuck for a year. So they will be rushing out from Hong Kong and we have no a lot of family burden. So they will be the one first, I think they will be rushing out uh, to see the world after the whole year of that. The second, second group that we think will be uh, very much uh, uh, in our target will be the retired, uh, like early retirement uh, uh, group because they are having a lot of time to travel and around and after vaccine, they will have the protections to go around. So meanwhile, uh, for the rest of the fiscal, we will be working with the trade to actually get experiences fit for these targets. And also there's another two segments which is emerging uh, potential. It will be the study tour uh, short excursion program because a lot of the students are having 
been locked down for the whole year. We believe when the border opens, that the schools will be allowing them to actually see the world. And then meanwhile, we can still motivate this group of people, uh, the students to actually think about Australia first. And if there is any virtual experiences that you can share with us, please do so that we can share with our Aussie specialists to promote for the student stream holiday. The other thing is uh, about the MICE group. And I think uh, we will be talking with all the corporate travel agents to actually well prepare them for bidding new MICE uh, incentive group for us. And also for the corporate travelers because they are also the high yield uh, segment that they can go for more like golfing or uh, uh, higher yield uh, activities. So back to the trade updates. So these are some of the details that I just now mentioned. Uh, over Chinese New Year, because uh, Tourism Australia is the chair of the Association of National Tourist Office Representatives in Hong Kong, so we actually conducted a virtual uh, CNY binding uh, uh, party to with the uh, other 14 NTOs, because as one, I think we all would like to re uh, uh, re-energize our outbound uh, tourism so that we all as a team that to greet uh, to all our key distribution partners. And uh, over the uh, lockdown, uh, actually, uh, we have a small mini TA crew in-house to actually um, go and uh, uh, interview some of our key partners like Wing On and EGL, and then to talk with them and get more insight of what are they doing and what are they plan for reopening. So these are the videos that we have been produced. And uh, the trade partnerships, just now I mentioned about the first one that to use some local uh, content creator because they are all from Hong Kong. Actually, they migrated from Hong Kong already in Australia. So they are using in Hong Kong lens, Hong Kong tone, Cantonese tone to actually talk about their experiences. And then we, will, we are having uh, content produced uh, 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 using two uh, uh, routes. One is the legendary Pacific Coast and one is the food and wine trail. And I think this exercise is going to push further to other states uh, after we have done uh, 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 the, the New South Wales one. So the others, and, and once, uh, once the border is reopened, we are going to actually heavily advertise this uh, content to make it in, into a conversion. So uh, for ATE, we actually uh, already have uh, 23 buyers uh, uh, signed up. You can see from uh, the chart that who are they and where they are from. And, luck, and very happy we have five ATE Lux buyers also uh, uh, joining this time. So my, many of the Aussie specialist activities just now only one, we have one trainers and uh, coordinator. She actually conducted 15 webinars and under different themes. So I would like to show a quick video uh, so about our Chinese New Year CNY binding. So uh, happy. So after the Aussie's Bright Sky, this is another uh, one voice activities that we all join force together to do something. So quickly uh, below, this is some of the uh, Festival Australia's event that we have achieved this kind of result. And then uh, the local content uh, featuring more stories. And last but not least, this is the last slide that we have earned some media uh, coverage over the, over the lock time. So now may I invite back the team uh, back to the panel for our Q&A section. Hi, everyone. 
Back. I know, um, uh, well, thank you for all that, firstly, to all my uh, colleagues. I know we're just about to hit time for the webinar series, but um, we might just go over a bit. If any of you uh, watching do need to leave, we will just record um, this so you can come back and, and watch it. But we would like to just try and get to a couple of the questions. We haven't had many come in. Uh, if you do have any uh, and are still online, then it looks like we've got about 100 people still there, then, then please uh, do send them through while we've got all the team here. But um, Let's try and get to a couple of these. Look, as we did last year, um, we've had similar questions uh, this year around, I guess, some of the, the trade tensions between um, Australia and China and whether that's impacting consumer sentiment and um, desire to travel to Australia. I might get uh, you to take that one on, Andrew. Thanks, thanks, Lee. Um, the people to people connections and the links between Australia and China are very strong. and, and the desire, the desirability, and also the desire to travel to Australia has remained strong over the over the course of the last few years prior to um, prior to the border closure as well. And in the discussions we've had with um, our key distribution partners, they still you know see great demand for Australia into the future and still want to continue to support Australia. For a, a consumer perspective as well, Australia still remains very very high. Number one for consideration and intention. Um, of when borders are uh, open. And there's a couple of things to do with that is, you know, around wildlife, nature, but also, you know, what has been really high in, on people's minds has been safety and Australia's um, ability to be able to, to um, battle COVID and, and get through that has seen uh, the Chinese consumer look at that from a perspective and say, Australia's done really well. So therefore it, it is a safe destination and a safe country to go to. Um, you know, in, in terms of the, the, the broader relationship between Australia and China, I think, um, uh, you know, it's not without its difficulties, but the, as I said, the people to people links remain very strong, whether they be the high proportion of um, Australian Chinese or Chinese Australians, whichever way, you know, wherever they were born, but also, um, you know, the, the family links, um, students and the VFR market still will, will remain very strong. And that also then drives, um, you know, from a leisure perspective as well, that, that Australia is seen as a great destination. So. You know, I, I couldn't test whether or not, um, you know, with borders closed, whether or not that um, will continue. But um, you know, we're very confident that that would um, those people-to-people -people links will remain, and, and Australia will still be a very desired destination. Thanks, Andrew. Um, maybe one for you, Carmen. I know uh, when we spoke last year, there was um, last July, I think it was, there was a bit of unrest on the streets in Hong Kong at the time. Yeah, you know, what's the situation on the ground there now? No, we are all peaceful cities. So everything's back to um, uh, normal. There's no more social unrest. So the only unrest is our COVID situation up and down. So after, if we cure this, it will, will be very good. Okay, great. Now, I know you answered this one, I think in your presentation, Carmen. So I, I don't know, Fred, if you covered off on this or you, Benjamin. Um, so apologies if I'm asking it again, but yeah, there was an early question that came in about, um, so from, from mainland China about, you know, who in your opinion will be the customers coming back first? You know, we've heard from the industry that it's FIT, but will they come back? Are the flights going to be cheap enough? Is it more going to be ADS groups in small charters? You know, what's the feeling in, in China then? Yeah, I'll just take this one first and Benjamin can add on. Um, so from our various discussion with our airline partners and media partners, we do have a strong feeling that the young consumer um, other people who can't wait to travel. Um, one of the meetings that we had with China Southern before Chinese New Year, and then they have told us their ob observation uh, of China domestic travel uh, right after China was um, uh, China's travel restriction was lifted, were actually the young people, uh, the people uh, who are in their early 20s, because they have been stranded at home for so long. And the and same situation for international travel. And our media friends have been telling us that you know, these um, young audience, 20 to 30 years old, um, may may want may be the um, the first um, capital rank to um, to travel to rush out of China to experience international traveling, and also for uh, consumer segments, we also believe family traveling smaller groups um, will be uh, a main trend. Uh, we'll probably see less uh, big FIT groups or big group travels with big you know 40 seater buses. But um, smaller family, maybe six, seven people three, across three generations, um, and come to Australia, hire a car, uh, be on their way, uh, will uh, be a major trend um, in the future when the border opens. Yeah, I think this family group, a small group, um, is a trend. 
and it, it did happen uh, before COVID, mm -hmm. but will continue to be um, in, uh, after COVID. And uh, for the itinerarys, I think um, the for the family travel, small group travel, they might have a very full itinerary. Uh, we call this a semi-FIT or a semi-service um, um, uh, sort of uh, itinerary. So they book through the agent, um, some, some hotels, some cars and uh, leave a little open uh, when you're traveling in Australia. So they can a little bit flexible every day to go wherever they want, they want to go. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, Benjamin. Um, we always get asked this question too. Uh, uh, travel bubbles, you know, we've got a question here about, you know, will Australia and China ignite talks of a travel bubble? We know we've got New Zealand about to happen. We saw the Prime Minister yesterday um, say that he wanted Singapore to be next in line or one of the first next in line. So we're having those conversations. Are you hearing up anything up there in market, Andrew, about travel bubbles? Yeah, the, the, the Australian government, the Prime Minister mentioned, has mentioned before, as well as other ministers and um, governments mentioned that Australia will continue to seek to look at travel bubbles, whether that be um, in the broader broader area from Singapore, Korea, Japan, um, China. Um, so, and when we talk China, we talk Greater China. So, you know, that's that's those travel bubbles are certainly there. There has been a lot of media and a lot of attention put on the Australia um, New Zealand travel bubble here over the last couple of days. And and I was asked that question directly last night by our key distribution partners. And I said, this is a great thing that there's Australia um, New Zealand travel bubble. We've got to get one up, prove something to be able to move forward. Um, but you know it's got to be it's got to be on both sides. The bubble can't just be you know it's one way as we know it doesn't work. So it's got to be on both sides. But the Australian government did has said um, Japan, Korea, uh, Greater China, and Singapore as well as being looked at. So yeah, and as as China starts going through and ramping up its vaccination program, there seems to be last night um, in the discussions we had with our key distribution partners a little bit more optimism that things are moving forward. So you know there's some some positivity um, coming through, although we don't have a time frame or, or have the ability to be able to do that. We've always continued to say when it's safe to do so, that, that borders would reopen. Cool. Thanks, for it be uh, remiss of me uh, not to ask you, Andrew, but knowing China's a, a many countries in one country, really, you're up there in Beijing, you know, uh, you touched on it a little bit, but what's the actual feeling on the ground there in Beijing about um, Australia and travel and just the sentiment there in general? Number one for consideration and number one for intention. It's in, in all the research we've had, the engagement we've had, people that want to talk about Australia and travelling to Australia and, and doing the great things in Australia. And we just talked a little bit about you know, the types of things that people will do. And one of the discussions that was uh, last night was um, really around um, what type, what would the consumer start to look for? And it might be that they slow down and not do three destinations in a seven day itinerary. It might be that one or two, or that I've been to Australia before and I'm just going to go and do one place and I'm going to do it well and I'm going to take the time to relax and have more mindfulness or more meaningful more meaningful travel as well, a little bit more slowing down. And Fred and Benjamin have talked about those smaller groups and family groups as well. And I think that's where we'll see a lot of change. So. And, and Australia is well positioned for that, and we're recognised for great our great attributes. You know, behind you, Lee, is the is the fabulous Gold Coast and the beaches. Um, talking about you know where Carmen is there, beaches and and wilderness and wildlife. Australia hits all of those buttons, and I don't think that is ever going to go away. I think someone actually asked about your background, Carmen, um, and and where it was. Uh, whoever that was. Um, Ali, I think it, uh, yeah, Bay of Fires. That's right, you've put it on there. Um, but for all of you watching, these backgrounds are actually available for you to um, to download and use as your own Zoom backgrounds. Um, we might send out a link to them so that you can access all these images but, um, that, that you see TA people have. They're actually available uh, for everyone to use. Um, I'm not sure who's best to answer this one or what the answer is. We might have to come back to you on this one. Angela up in Cairns has asked, uh, any chance of supplies accessing the Australian night sky photography training. Sounds great. Um, for Hong Kong, we can, we have one uh, theme uh, ASP actually done from uh, uh, like uh, sky, uh, night viewing. So I think any opportunities like that, we can uh, uh, investigate and, and, and try to carry forward because I guess our nights is so fantastic. I think this is new experiences that we can actually share. And, and I think for the China market, we are constantly working with a lot of KOLs 
who are very specialized in their photographies mm -hmm. and they always go around to give uh, forums and, and discussion groups about how they take their wonderful pictures and then we can partner up these KOLs uh, with you guys yeah. um, in Australia um, and, and then through their channels uh, to talk to their followers um, about how to take a beautiful, nice guy uh, imagery. Yeah. yeah. And Lee, I think that also, you know, we the, the uh, team with Benjamin and Fred and Carmen in market and also, you know, the, the more broadly in the team that we have in, in Singapore and India and Indonesia and Malaysia as well, right throughout Asia and Japan and Korea, is we also, you know, feeding into a lot of the information that that not only you and your team are sending up, but our direct engagement with the industry in Australia. And that's what we're here to do is to make sure that we're continually updating both trade and consumer side here. So, you know, if there's anything that you've got or, or anything you need, please reach out to the in market teams or myself. And I'll, you know, either it be um, you know, for South Asia or for North Asia, very happy to do that. And through Hong Kong and Japan, Korea and China. We really look forward to being able to get provide those um, that information, those great stories that the industry in Australia has, and being able to translate that into what it, what the consumer or the trade sees, and get and get that information out here as well. So please reach out to the teams and, and shoot any of that thing, that any anything through that you uh, think is of interest or new product or or new ways of doing things. And as Angela said, you know the the night sky photography. How can we how can we try and develop that? Too? Mm. Fantastic. And that's probably a good point to finish. We did have one other question on managing language barriers, but Matthew, who's asked, I will send you out some material separately on, a, on an email about that. Uh, but uh, once again, I'll just say thanks to my colleagues here, but thank you to everyone else who's still online. Still got 80 odd people uh, who've hung in there for the extra 10 minutes. Sorry that we've gone over everyone, but um, to Andrew's point, you can also contact any of the industry team here in, in Sydney as well, and we'll come back to you. Um, and likewise, I know my colleagues here are all uh, very accessible. So thanks again, everyone, both my colleagues and everyone who's online watching. Uh, look forward to um, doing this again soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.